Study your history, brothers and sisters. The skin is an antenna to God. That melanin inside your beautiful, beautiful black skin is an antenna to God. When you hear the music, the color in your skin answers the music that you hear. You're the only people that's like that. They call us in secret the indigenous people of the earth. Look that word indigenous up. It means natural to the planet. You are the aboriginal people of the earth. Look that word up. It means you first. It means God with his hands made us. And once God makes something, nobody can outdo what God did. All right, all right. Assalamu alaikum, family. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go into our... Uh, Next video, that's part two to the one we did before called The Gift of Allah. So we're going to start off like we did in the last video. We're going to do our opening prayer that was given to us by Master Far Muhammad. So follow me silently to yourself as we do our opening prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah to be beneficent and merciful. Surely I turn myself to thee, O Allah trying to be upright to he who has originated the heavens and the earth, and I'm not of the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and this am I commanded, I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king, there is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant, and I've been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess my faults. So grant me protection against all my faults, for none can grant protection against faults but thee. And guide me to the best of morals, for none can guide me to the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. And O Allah, make Muhammad successful, and make the true followers of Muhammad successful, as thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. And O Allah, bless Muhammad and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham and the true followers of Abraham, for surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, brothers, once again, peace and salutations to you, family. Children of God first and the rest of the world second. You are tuning in to your humble brother, Brother Zebulon X. And it's not just me, but it's we. Brother Jabril is making this happen with me. I thank God for my son. I thank God that we're on the same page, we're in the same nation, and we're both doing the same work. And that is our first work, the first work of the resurrection of the dead, a work that only Jesus the Christ can do. So I'm so thankful for him. Uh, just to give you a little background on myself. Uh, again, like I said, I'm your humble brother Zebulon, a part of the Nation of Islam. I'm in the ministry class of the Nation of Islam and we like to move quickly and candidly through this video. Uh, we like to pay respect to the one and the ones who have actually made this possible. And uh, we always start off in the name of Allah, the God. We thank Allah. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah. We thank him for his holy prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, who gave us the Holy Quran or through whom the Holy Quran was revealed. But we could never ever thank Allah enough for coming in the person of Master Far Muhammad, the great Mahdi, that was promised. The man that the conscious world has been waiting for and the people who are not so conscious, us, the unlearned, we are benefiting from what Allah has sent. Because through us, the Bible says the last, he rose up, a divine leader, teacher, guide, and now exalted Christ, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan as their divine reminder, warner, and comforter in our midst today. 
We thank Allah continually for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, one of the gifts of Allah. So it is in their names that we greet you once again in the nation of Islam's greeting words of peace in the Arabic language. We say it in the language of our fathers in Arabic. We say assalamu alaikum. And for those who do not know what those words are or not familiar with those words, they simply mean peace be upon you. In order to get the fullness out of our videos, we ask you or implore you really to have the, the materials, items that will make you get the most out of the video. And that is a pen, a pad, a holy Quran, a holy Bible, a clear mind and a pure heart open mind and an open heart. So with that being said, we're going to go quickly into our day's uh, video that's entitled The Gift of Allah. We also want to say Ramadan Mubarak. Happy Ramadan to all of the uh, Muslims and to all of the Christians. Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew chapter 17 verse 21 and we all know that we are in need of healing. Jesus said certain demons can only be cast out through prayer and fasting. So this is the holy month of Ramadan for the Muslims that we every second of the day, we don't eat any food. We don't drink any water during the daylight hours. For those who are not familiar with Ramadan, just give you a quick little, we're just going to share a little bit what Ramadan really is. It's not just a Muslim thing. When we understand the terminology, Muslim means one who submits his will to do the will of God. And Islam is total submission to the will of God. So that's why instead of going to the Holy Quran, I went to the Bible, Matthew uh, chapter 17, verse 21, where Jesus is saying certain demons can only be cast out through prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting is two pillars of Islam and very powerful pillars that when we practice these pillars, when we practice these commands that were given to us by Allah through Jesus, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them both for our benefit as a gift for us. It's a major gift when you obey Allah. We receive mighty blessings that we are familiar with and that we see and other gifts that we don't see. I mean, it shows in your face. It shows in your health, you know. So we just thank Allah for that proper guidance. And uh, this month of Ramadan, we are to pray. We are to fast. We are to read our Holy Quran and get straight through it. All of the impurities and the different things that we would want to do in the hereafter. Different things we want to do if we feel like we're not strong enough in this everyday world that we live in. We are not, we see people that we look up to. We see spiritual men, we see pastors, we see imams and reverends, and we wish that we could be like that. Well, to start, it's always Ramadan, where whatever you think you are unable to do, you can practice that this month. And inshallah, if God is willing, you'll be able to keep it going and going and going into the next year and for the rest of the years of your of our lives on this planet. So with that, we need healing. We need blessings. It's been a little minute since we did a video, but I want you to know that these videos are not lightweight. We don't take them lightly. These videos, we prefer to just go right from the heart only because we have an Internet full of people who know how to act in front of you who know how to speak in front of you and that's all beautiful and that's all great but with brother Zebulon myself I like to share the power of Allah that can work inside of nobody like myself so when we come before you we come before you in his name we come before you in the name of the men that he sent we come before you literally demonstrating how Allah can take a zero and make a 10 out of him because we take no credit for any good that we do. 
exactly like our leader. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has been doing great things and we have been witnessing miraculous things through that man, one of which was the Million Man March. Not just the first one, but the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, <laughs> the Million Man March. Ten, not, his last one was 10, 10, 15, where I believe about 1.3 million people showed up, shaking up those dry bones in the valley and making us all come together as a great army, an exceedingly great army, like it says in Ezekiel 37. But the minister doing that at the end, each time he always gave all praises due to Allah, the originator of the heavens and the earth. So that leads me right to where I want to be when we talk about the gift of Allah. So many gifts, but since Allah is not only physical and not only spiritual, but he's both. When you're not spiritually minded, when you don't have the mind of Allah, like it says in scriptures, Isaiah 55, I believe it is. God said, my ways are not like your ways. I'm from above and you are from beneath. Well, in Isaiah 45, he also says that uh, I, Allah, or I, the Lord, form the evil. And let's let's read it. <laughs> and we want to give a shout out to our sister Hadija, who was the beginning of saying, Brother Zebulon, slow down and just go ahead and open up that Bible. So we've been opening it up ever since. So we're going right to Isaiah 45. So it's never good to think that you would know it all. Because when people want to give you some advice is an intelligent thing to take that advice. All right, so here we are, Isaiah 45, verse 7. It says, I form the light. Now, this is God talking through Isaiah. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, that's a powerful, powerful thing. When you have a God that sees things in that way, what may be a blessing for us might not look like a blessing to us. You understand what I'm trying to say? Mm. So castor oil is not a good taste, but if you look it up, it's very, very good for you, for your digestive system, for your stomach, and even for your immune system. But it doesn't taste so well. Like it says that it goes in your mouth like honey. And it goes that it says that in the book of Revelation that the word of God would go in your mouth sweet when you ate that book. I believe it's around uh, chapter seven or five or both in the book of Revelation, where it says that the when you eat the book, it would go in sweet, but it would hit your stomach bitter. So, I mean, we see these contrasts in the word. The last verses of the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 4, verse 5, where it says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Look at the contrast. Great and dreadful day of the Lord. We're there right now. Here Allah is saying that he creates the light or he forms the light and creates darkness. He makes peace and he creates evil. So it is with the book that God is asking you to eat. When you eat the book, and I'm living proof of eating the book, you are what you eat. There will come a time that God's chosen people, the people who are despised and rejected, like myself and you, Allah will choose the last on the totem pole. He will choose the despised and rejected, the last and make him the first. And then he would have us represent him right here on earth. We are the trumpet of Allah. A trumpet is the way you, uh, or an instrument that you blow to announce that something's about to take place. When you're in the army, you hear the little 
sound of the trumpet or the bugle and they blow it, that means it's time to get up. We know that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad raised up a divine leader, teacher, guide, comforter, warner, Al Farrakhan, the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan as his trumpet. That man is a human trumpet. And the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan's voice is a trumpet. I've watched being blessed to be on post many times with our leader and I looked into the audience and I looked at people who believed in him, people who didn't believe in him, people who liked him and people who might not know enough to be able to say that they not only like him but love him. I mean, the news puts him out there as being a man that is not somebody that you should like. So people that get caught up in the propaganda I saw those people come in frowning at first. Then when Allah starts blowing the trumpet, the trumpet, the honorable minister Lord Farrakhan, I saw those same people go, the minister would take them from frowning to smiling. I seen people transformed with that trumpet of Allah. And in every scripture, divine writing of God, whether it be the Torah, the Old Testament of the Bible, the Holy the, the gospel of Jesus, the Injil, or the Holy Quran. In all three books of Allah, the trumpet is there. So there's something very, very special about that trumpet. That trumpet is an instrument that does not allow you to sleep through the trumpet. So the minister has awakened us all and we have heard that trumpet. Now, what are we going to do? with that trumpet call because that trumpet is a part of this massive gift of Allah. I want to just share that we are going through a lot in our world today. As we celebrate our holy month of Ramadan, we have the George Floyd case going on. We have a lot of uncertainty Spiritually, me being a barber, I get a chance to hear from my people. I get a chance to hear from my friends, our brothers, our sisters, and I get a chance to talk to people one-on-one -on -one for a nice period of time, half an hour, 40 minutes. And people are really confused and don't know which way to go. And it's because we're denying the gift of Allah, the massive Gift. I keep saying massive because it's, it's all inclusive. It's not just money. It's not just homes. It's not just wisdom. It's not just knowledge. But it's all of the above. That when we have what Master Father Muhammad promised us, money, good homes, friendships, and all walks of life, we will be able to get the necessities of life. It's all inclusive, we can have clarity. It's all inclusive, we can stop begging for people to do for us what we can rightly do for ourselves. That is a major gift. It's all inclusive, we get clarity and won't ask because you know we are not, in the nation of Islam, we are not taking the vaccine. In the Nation of Islam, we promote that we remember. It's all in our newspaper. Pass me the paper, son. That we put our trust in Allah. Final Call newspaper, we implore that you get it. It comes out every week. And it's the news of not only the black man and woman, but the news of the righteous. It's righteous news. There's no lie in this newspaper. We need this newspaper because whenever you see something good that we're doing, you'll never see it on the everyday news. So if it wasn't, if it's not for a paper like this, or if we don't have a paper like this, you'll never know what's going on. And that is a very depressing way of living when you watch the local news that's constantly talking about what the black man and the black woman is not doing. 
So we are not taking their vaccine because we are rightly guided human beings who's guided by Al Mahdi, who is the self-guided one. Well, what is misguided? See, before you can really appreciate a gift, you have to really look at how you would look without the gift. Well, without the gift of Allah, we don't have the clarity and we're confused. And when you're confused, you run around with a picket sign in your hand, begging others to do for you what you can rightly do for yourself. And you beg them to spare you and recognize you and your life. So we have Black Lives Matter masks, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter picket signs, and we're protesting with this and we're imploring them to, to, to give us that. And it's like pleading with them to recognize your life because we know they really don't recognize our life. Our lives is not valuable to them. So if they could care less about your life and almost would like to see you dead, why then would you go to them and pull up your sleeve? That shows confusion. Either you over here to the right or you over here to the left. I mean, a double-minded person like the scriptures say in the book of Proverbs, a double-minded person, let's go there. Where is it in the scriptures where it says that a double-minded person is mixed up in all his ways? I like to use the exact terminology. Give me two seconds. I found this on the web. Okay. Now that is not, see, I'm glad. It's chapter 1, verse 8, the book of James. We deal with the actual facts in the nation of Islam. We're talking about the gift of Allah. So I love to say that a big, big part of that gift is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. When you look at that man, I had shirts made up that said YouTube Farrakhan back in the day. His work is so massive that all you have to do is YouTube Farrakhan and you better do it now because they're trying to get him off. But you'll see a body of work, you know what I mean? Where this man has done a fantastic work, a perfect work. You'll see interviews with Barbara Walters, you'll see interviews with Mike Wallace, you'll see interviews uh, with Meet the Press, you'll see interviews on CNN, and they went and got their wisest people to do what they do in court. Shine a light on you and interrogate you and try to trick you up and make you say what you really don't feel so that they can put it on the front page and say, look at what this hater said. But this man was lifted up by Almighty God, Allah. And you were looking at Jesus on TV. The spirit of Christ would not allow wicked ones to make him, to, to, to misrepresent his Lord, his Father, our Father who art in heaven. Well, what is the updated expression of that kind of work and that kind of spirit is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So here we are in the book of James, chapter 1, verse 8. Let's read 7 to get a little context. It says, For let not, the, for let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Verse 8, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. The book of James is a very powerful book. I have this marked up so bad I could barely see it, family. <laughs> but the book of James is a book written by James, the brother of Jesus. A lot of us don't know that. Jesus' is biological brother. The book of James was writ written after the book of Malachi, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Synoptic Gospels. James is written after the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension of Jesus the Christ. 
The book of James was written after all of that. But yet it says, uh, faith without works is dead. That's chapter two. You show me a man with no works and I'll show you a man with no faith. Of course, later on, and we don't want to get too far into that because we want to stay right on this gift of Allah. But just a little quick, quick public announcement. The book of James chapter 2, after this was written, the wicked ones, the evil ones, rearranged the, the scriptures of Jesus, the, the, the interpretation of the gospel. And they concocted a new translation, a new interpretation. Like it says in the Holy Quran, when you make new interpretations, it's right from the Antichrist. It's right from the evil one. Well, the new interpretation says you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> Public service announcement. The new interpretation says you can do whatever you want to do. And because Jesus died for our sins, he is the human sacrifice, the lamb of God who was to shed his blood for the people, for, 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 for the sinners of the world. And now because of what he did, being a perfect person without sin, suffered for those who are guilty of sin. And now that the blood has been shed, we are in the clear. Lord have mercy. Well, we're thankful that we are catching up with that well-dressed lie and we are going to take all of its clothes back off because this is not the time that we're living in right now. We are living in a time to be blessed, but you cannot be blessed if you do not unwrap your gift. And that's by the grace of Allah, what we're going to do as we conclude this wonderful talk, part two, and we want you to look forward to part three because we're going to go into how to eat the live, to live. Our student minister, Nori Muhammad, did a lecture a few weeks ago entitled How to Eat to Live. And he was going into the scriptures. He was going into the book, How to Eat to Live, and we're going to go into the scriptures. And we're going to do a little bit of that today. How to Eat to Live. See, back to the gift of Allah. A pure understanding of the word of Allah is food, good food. The scriptures are always explained as being things that you can eat, edible things, things that you can drink, something that goes in and something that transforms or something that we can benefit from because it's good. But it's exposing those same things that we can eat and drink and it'd be bad. Of course, bad wine is not good. Liquor is not good. Candy is not good. It tastes good, but it's not good. But fruit, vegetables, fish is very, very good. So the word of God is like that fish. The word of God is like that fruit. The word of God is like that pure water. So Jesus calls himself the water of life. Jesus calls himself the bread of life. And like we started off talking about that little book that was sealed up with seven seals that we were not to open it, but to eat it so that we can become what we eat and go to our people and at any moment be able to let what is in out by Allah's permission. This is our mission. This is our sole purpose in the nation of Islam, the resurrection of the dead. And you cannot resurrect the dead if you're a robot. You cannot resurrect the dead if you're not living a life mm, that we are supposed to live. So when we close, as we close, but right before we close, we're going to close out with 1 John chapter 1 verse 6 on down on down to 10 and it's talking about walking in the light of the Lord we know that that light is the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan but before we go there I just want to
continue to speak to you right from the heart about how good it feels. We talked about the contrast of good and bad, light and darkness, evil and good. It feels good to be rightly guided. We are overwhelmed, my son and I, my wife, my family, who are saved by the Nation of Islam teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad as taught by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we are saved. And it feels good, but when you are sincerely a saved human being, how good can you feel when others are not saved? You know what I mean? So our people are confused, our people are suffering, and we are not going to be happy until we can bring... All right. So we want to make sure we just keep rolling. You know, we always have to uh, do what we got to do. But my son says, just keep it moving, Dad. But we are so thankful to Allah and we are blessed, but we're not. We're not happy with that blessing until we're able to bring others where we are. And in the nation of Islam, we are not a religion that's looking for you to transform yourself into us. We are looking to give you the pure interpretation of Allah. You can stay where you are with that because when you have truth, truth only kisses and embraces and loves more of itself. So one thing about most religions, monotheistic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, is truth in all of them. We can all learn more about whatever it is that we have. So I'm so thankful to Allah that I was blessed to be pulled into because we don't really choose this. Allah chooses us. So when Allah blesses you to be one of his chosen and pulls you into this, we believe that each one teach one exercise the magnetic pull that Allah put inside you and bring the rest of our people with us. It is a better way of living. It's not living in despair. It's not living double minded or questioning yourself, which is what a lot of us do, because right when something looks good, it turns out to be bad. Right when something is bad, it turns out to be good. You really have no traction to this world. My son and I talked to a brother who was bragging about the Johnson and Johnson vaccine last Saturday. We went to the skating rink and we looked at our people loaded no social distance, jam-packed, right up on each other like sardines. We sat in the parking lot. We weren't going in, but we sat in the parking lot. I wanted to see how long it would take for all of these people to get in. Took over an hour. One of the brothers that I know that works there, he came over to me, a security guard, and he was telling, asking me if I wanted to come to the, the, to, to the next session, and I asked him, is it a lot of people? He said, oh, yeah, a lot. Well, I said, well, <laughs> count me out. And he said, well, I took my vaccine. I said, really? He said, you going to take yours? I said, no, sir. So the brother said, <laughs> he said, well, I, I, I got mine. I said, really? Uncomfortable silence. I wanted to make it a little better. I asked him, I said, well, did you take, are you going to take the second one? He said, well, I took the Johnson & Johnson. It's all inclusive. And it's just crazy because days later, we already heard about Johnson & Johnson. Yeah, you, you asked him how he felt. He was saying he had headaches and stuff. Thank you for that. Yeah, I said, how you feel? He said, it's just starting to kick in. That was his exact words. He said, it's just starting to kick in. He's having hot and cold spells. Yeah, he said the doctors was like, um, but that, that's, that's how you know it's working. The doctor said, that's how you know it's working. Working for who? You know what I mean? But we don't like to persuade people. You know what I mean? And you use little cheap ways to do it. We, we implore you to not take it because they don't have a good history. Our illustrations that the minister went in his pocket and got us. The warning from Al Farrakhan, the warner, the discrimination. Farrakhan went into exactly what these vaccines do. And it goes, it, it fights... It gets your immune system to fight against its own self, to eat you up from inside. Blood clots were one of the uh, side effects. And now here we have it with Johnson & Johnson blood clots. 
is, is, is some of the side effects. Now, my thing is they fresh out of a, Lord have mercy, fresh out of a case with Johnson. No, Johnson & Johnson is fresh out of a case with uh, the powder. <laughs> Why would you go with them? But, you know, we're going to leave that there and get back on the spiritual. But uh, we're just so thankful to Allah that we clearly can see this beast as he is. We're so thankful to Allah to be able to rightly uh, divide the word of God and be able to break it down and get a clear exegesis. We're thankful to Allah to have a religion that whatever you teach, we can find the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad right through the volume of your own book. That is a major thing, a major blessing. That's one of the things that attracted me to Islam on a whole. The Orthodox Islam, the Holy Quran, that was revealed by, uh, revealed by our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, chapter two, verse 62 in the Holy Quran. Can you get it for me, son, please? I should have already had this. We don't want to do any paraphrasing. We're going to conclude with these last two scriptures, family. Look forward to part two or part three of the gift of Allah. Now, this is the Holy Quran, chapter two, verse 62. It says, surely, well, I always open up Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely those who believe and those who are Jews and the Christians and the Sabians, whoever believes in Allah in the last day and does good, they have their reward with their Lord and there is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Well, that's the most equitable scripture that I have witnessed. We read the Old Testament, we read the New Testament, but it's not too many, and we go to church. We've been to more Science Temple. We've been to all different types of houses of worship. And one thing they all had in common is how strong they felt toward you converting to them. Well, in the Holy Quran, the Holy Prophet is saying, if you believe and do good, believe in Allah in the last days and does good, you'll get your reward and won't have to grieve. And that's amazing because he's pointing out certain religions. No other religion would say that we can make it. We can go into that a little further, but I choose to close out. We'll do that with the next one where we can go into certain things that's in the Holy Quran so much. But right now we're going to close out with this scripture and then we're going to close out in prayer family thank you for your patience thank you for your attention but here's the holy bible first john chapter 1 verse 6 it says he that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked brethren i write no new commandment unto you but an old commandment, which ye had from the beginning. Oh, look at this. The old commandment is the word which ye have heard from the beginning. That's for all the people who think that Jesus did away with the old. Think not that I come to change the law, but to fulfill it. This is a part of the fulfillment. Verse 8. Again, a new commandment I write unto you. Which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is past and the true light now shineth. Oh, man. Verse 9. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even until now. Oh, man. Let's listen. Let's listen. Verse 10. He that loveth his brother 
abideth in the light and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness and walketh, walketh in darkness and knoweth not whither he goeth because the darkness hath blinded his eyes. So we can stop with verse 11. May Allah bless the reading of his word as always. As we conclude, we conclude with our closing prayer. We close with the Al-Fatiha. Follow me, hands extended as if you're receiving a gift, the gift of Allah. Head tilted, repeat to yourself silently after me. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise are due to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Master of this day and judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve, and thee alone do we beseech for aid. O Allah, guide us on a straight path, the path of those to whom thou hast bestowed favors. Not the path of those to whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray after they heard thy teaching. Say he, Allah, is one. Allah is he of whom none is independent, but upon whom we all depend. He neither begets nor is he begotten, and none is like him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, who came to us in the divine person of Master, Far Muhammad, the great Mahdi to whom praise is due forever. And I further bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is his exalted Christ in our midst. And the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan is their divine warner, comforter, and Holy Spirit of truth that's in our midst today guiding us into all truth. I mean. Amen. Assalamu alaikum family. Wa alaikum salam.